Okay, so we are multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Okay, um, today is going to be a lot, so you do need to make sure you're paying attention and not on your phone, so on and so forth. Okay, so, get all my pins. I know this is super corny, but it, it's true. Okay, so it says dividing fractions as easy as pi, just flip the second and multiply. Okay, so when you have division, like this, you flip the second thing, whatever's after the division, and then you just multiply. Okay, so let's rewrite the first thing because that stays the same. We change it to multiply, and we flip what's after the division sign. So it becomes 24MN over 35CD cubed. Okay, now we can simplify. So what do you see number-wise, not the letters yet, let's do numbers first because that's what's going to go first in our answer. What can simplify? Huh? Somebody's saying something, but I can't hear y'all. Two. What does that mean? The 9 and the 24 can simplify because what goes into both of those? 3. So this is 3 times 8, and this is 3 times 3, right? So we can cross out a 3. What else can simplify? Number wise, so like 14 and 35. 7 goes into both of those, right? So this is 7 times 2, and this is 7 times 5. Therefore, the sevens cancel. Now, we're just looking at our numbers right now. What's two times eight? And what's three times five? Does 16 over 15 simplify? No, so we're good. We simplified the whole numbers as simple as they can get. Okay, so now let's look at our letters. Remember with letters, you always want to, um, do them alphabetically. So what letter in this problem goes first in the alphabet? C. Okay, where are there more, top or bottom? Bo okay, I was about to go with it, but then I was like, wait. <laughs> okay, so we have C squared on top and C on bottom. Now remember with division, because technically when you multiply y'all, this just goes across. So it's really just one big fraction. Okay, so C squared over C turns into what? Just C, because 2 minus 1 is 1. What letter comes next in the alphabet? D. Where are there, there are more on bottom, and how many am I going to have? D squared, because 3 minus 1 is 2. What comes next in the alphabet? I'm going to cross those out because I'm done with them. M cubed over M. Where are there more? Bottom. And what's 3 minus 1? And then we have N. Where are there more? And 2 minus 1 is 1, so there's your answer. Yes. The only thing is we had a division sign in the middle. Now, it gets a little more intense today, but not bad. Don't worry. Okay? Um, as long as you take things one step at a time today, you should be okay. Two big things before we move on, though. Now, this one didn't have any plus and minus, so like order and GCFs don't really matter because there's no plus or minus, there really is no GCF. You see what I'm saying? Okay, when there's plus and minus, things change, and that's where factoring comes into play. So when you're at, when you have pluses and minus signs, you need to make sure you always check for a GCF, and you always need to make sure they're in order. Order matters way more than you realize, okay? Those are two big things that you need to check every piece of every problem for. Okay, so let's look at number two. There are four pieces to this problem. Numerator, denominator, numerator, nu numerator and denominator. Top, bottom, top, bottom. That's so much easier to say. Okay. Um, what do we notice in the middle? 
division. So we are going to have to flip this. Okay. So one thing I want you to do, if you're like me, I hate having to write out things a million times. I don't have enough room on my paper and I write too big. So before I even pay attention to the second piece of this, I'm going to try to factor the first piece. Okay. So first things first, is the top in order? Yeah. Does it have a GCF? What is it? 5x cubed, right? There's three here and five there. You can take three away from both of them, correct? So we're going to take out a 5x cubed. And when I take that out, what am I left with? x squared minus 4 over, what about my denominator? How am I going to factor that? It's in order. There's no GCF. There's three terms, so we have to snowflake. Okay, so I'm going to come over here just so I don't get so messy all the way over there. And I want you to realize that A is 1, B is negative 1, and C is negative 2. Remember, it's A times C, B, AX, AX. So A is 1, so I have 1X, 1X. B is negative 1. And then 1 times negative 2 is just negative 2. What multiplies to give me negative 2 but adds to give you negative 1? Negative 2, positive 1. Now, the nice thing is when A is 1, do you ever have to simplify your sides? No, you'll never have to simplify when A is 1, so we like that. So we get X minus 2, X plus 1. Now, it was division, but I'm going to change it to multiplication. And then remember, the denominator is going to become my numerator. So how do I factor x squared minus 1? Difference of squares. So what will it become? It's going to become x plus 1, x minus 1. I'm going to show you why. You were right. So because this is something squared minus something squared, well, x squared is x squared. And 1 squared is 1. So A is X and B is 1. And then our formula is A plus B, A minus B. Where are those formulas in your note packet? On the front of the first day, in the note side of day one. Okay, all the cube formulas are there, difference of squares formula is there, the prime formula is there. All of that's there for you, okay? Now let's look at the top. What do I need to do? Is it in order? Does it have a GCF? Yes, what's the GCF? X what? X cubed. Because I can't take five X's away from either of these. I can take five X's from this one, but this one only has four. Do I really want to give myself negative exponents and start dealing with all that? You see what I'm saying? So you can only take, well, usually whatever the smallest exponent is, is how much you take. Because I can take three away from here, three away from here, and three away from here, and we're being fair, so everything's the same. Okay? So when I take that away, I'm left with x squared plus x minus 2, because I took all three of those x's. Now, is this completely factored? No. What two pieces are still not factored? There's two pieces. So the bottom right needs to be snowflaked. That's correct. What other piece? So this one needs to do again. Top left. This is the difference of squares. X squared. Anytime you'll see a squared, check for difference of squares or snowflake. Well, it doesn't have three terms, so I'm not going to snowflake it. But it has two terms, and they're both perfect squares. Because I know that this is something squared minus something squared. It's x squared is x squared. And 2 squared is 4. So a is x and b is 2. So I'm going to rewrite it. I have 5x cubed, x minus 2x plus 2. Now, was the denominator fully factored? There's no squareds. There's nothing. There's no GCF. So yeah, the denominator is fully factored. 
Now the numerator on this side is fully factored. I have that x cubed still, but I need to snowflake the inside. I know a is 1, b is 1, and c is negative 2. a times c is negative 2. b is 1. I have ax, ax. I'm going to give you a second to write. What multiplies to give me negative 2, but adds to give me positive 1? Positive 2 and negative 1. So it's almost exact. The B values were opposite, therefore your two side values were opposite. Okay? So I get x plus 2 and x minus 1. Now is everything fully factored? Yeah, I don't have, I mean, I have a cubed there, but that's outside. There's nothing I can do to simplify that. Everything is, or not simplify, but factor it. So everything's as factored as it gets. So what can we cross out? Almost. These x cubes cancel, right? I have an x minus 2 here and an x minus 2 there. Now, one thing I want to reiterate is can two things on the top cancel each other? No. Has to be top and bottom. You're exactly right. Okay, if you have two five minus two or x minus two's on top, they don't cancel each other. If you have one on top and one on bottom, then they cancel each other because why? Huh? They combine kind of. What is anything divided by itself? One. So yes, I say they cancel, but technically they all turn into one, and this becomes five times one times one times one times one times one. Well, what's five times one times one times one times one? So we say cancel, but technically it turns into a times 1, which doesn't change anything. Okay? Did you really think that big old mess was just going to end up equaling 5? I didn't. Okay? But it does. I will tell you, on your test, we were nice. Okay? We did not give you problems like this, or we will not. You haven't had it yet, but I've made it. Okay, you're not going to have problems like this. You're going to have problems like it, but they're going to be more like this step than that step. Okay? So you'll have to factor maybe one or two things, but not factor, then factor again, then factor again to cancel. You see what I'm saying? So don't stress out. This is a little harder than your test, but if you can get this, you should be great on your test. Okay, so let's look at example three. Okay, this is multiplication, so am I flipping anything? No. We're, nothing's going to be flipped. Okay, so I'm going to take it one piece at a time. Nothing's flipping. What am I going to do to factor this top left? Well, I'll get there. I'm taking it one piece at a time. Order is here. There's no GCF. Okay, and so I heard somebody, they said the snowflake. So A is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 6, so 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, b is negative 1, I have ax, ax. What multiplies to give me negative 6 but adds to give me negative 1? Negative 3 and what? Positive 2. 1 over 3 and 1 over 2 do not simplify, so those are my factors. So I get x minus 3, x plus 2. Now let's look at the denominator. Is it in order? Does it have a GCF? What's the GCF? 2. And when I take out that 2, what am I left with? x minus 1. Because remember, it's like dividing both pieces by 2. So 1x minus 1. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's multiplying. What's wrong with the top right? Uh, it's, not in order. it's not in order. So let's flip it to order before we move it down there. So I want you to realize that's a positive one. So we get negative x plus 1. Am I supposed to have negatives in front? Yeah. 
So what does that mean I need to do? Take out what? A negative what? One. Okay, if you just say negative, that's fine, but I also want you to realize it's just the same as a negative one. Divide by negative one, divide by negative one. That becomes positive x, and a positive divided by a negative becomes a negative. Over, how do I simplify, or factor the denominator? Snowflake again. So a is one, b is negative two, c is negative eight. I want you to remember this is a times c, and one times anything is itself. That's why it doesn't look, that's why it looks like it's just c. What multiplies to give me negative eight but adds to give me negative two? Huh? Negative four and positive two. Everything is factored as factored as it can be. So what cancels? X plus two is canceled. X minus one is canceled. Anything else? No. So I have this negative one, x minus three, over this two with an x minus four. Nothing there simplifies still, so I'm done. Because I took it out. Is it okay if you just put a negative there? Yeah. Because this one was set up as multiplication, we did not flip anything. The only time we flip is when it's division. Okay, the last one, multiplication or division? Multiplication. So we're not flipping anything. Okay, so this one is a little ugly, but bear with me. Okay, um, this is a cube minus a cube, so I'm going to say per, uh, it's a difference of cubes. Something cubed minus something cubed. The formula is on the front of your notes from day one. X cubed and Y cubed. So A is X and B is Y. So your formula is A minus B. A squared plus A times B plus B squared. Which, because this is just single letters, it's really just you writing it out with a different letter. What is your denominator? How am I going to factor that? Who can tell me? Difference, how did I get that? The difference of cubes formula. It's on the front of day one's notes at the bottom. Well, I found something cubed minus, yes, this is this piece. Factored. Yeah. So then the denominator is the difference of squares. X squared, Y squared. So A and B are still X and Y. So it just becomes X minus Y, X plus Y. And now those are factored. Now, what about after the multiplication symbol? No GCFs? Are they in order? They're actually not, but on this problem, it is kind of nice because it doesn't affect it, but just be careful because sometimes it really, really will affect it, okay? And the reason it doesn't affect it is because these should be at front, but they're still paired together, and these should be at the back, and they're still paired together, and that's why it doesn't affect it. But if it was like this one, that one, this one, that one, then it would look like it's unfactorable, and it wasn't. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so we're going to just do grouping. What's the GCF at front? Two. I'm actually, yeah. And what's left? And then what's the GCF at back? And X plus Y is left. Now, be careful. I saw a lot of this mistake yesterday. When they match, that's just one of your factors. Plus C. 
Now, I'm going to write the z first just because of order, and that's a positive 2, so z plus 2. So then the second one, same concept, grouping. What's your GCF of that front parentheses? 2. And you're left with x squared plus y squared. And what's your GCF of the second parentheses? A positive z, and you're again, you're left with x squared plus y squared. These match. And then you have the z plus 2 left. Again, I flipped it for order. And what cancels? z plus 2, x plus y, x minus y. Those do not cancel, so we get x squared plus xy plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Now, what I want you to realize is you cannot just cancel those x squared y squareds. We talked about this yesterday because this is a whole factor. That whole piece is considered together. This whole piece is considered together. So you, they have to match perfectly to cancel. When you have plus and minus, they have to match perfectly to cancel. So that is your answer.